every morning. It's not an alarm clock that wakes me up, it's purpose. My name is Reverend Dr. William J. Barber II. I'm the pastor of Greenleaf Christian Church, and I've been working uh, as one of the co-leaders of the Poor People's Campaign. I would say that uh, my work uh, growing out of a deep uh, religious and spiritual foundation uh, to help people look at public policy through the lens of our deepest moral values, uh, both constitutionally and religiously. How do we talk about public policy without just getting into the normal left-right discussions? And then moral activism. What does it look like in the 21st century to be engaged in addressing the immoral uh, economic, racial, and other policies in our culture at this time? The current work I'm doing is always intersectional. That's why it's hard to separate it out. So I'm a pastor, but as a pastor, I'm involved in a body called Repairs of the Breach, which is designed to organize and train both clergy and individuals in what we call moral fusion organizing, particularly in the South and around the country. And then as an outgrowth of that, I'm involved in the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival. Uh, we believe that the issue of po systemic racism and poverty and ecological devastation, the war economy, and the false moral narrative of so-called Christian nationalism are interlocking injustices that have to be addressed by poor people, poor and impacted people, coming together and organizing with religious leaders, their advocates, and even people who may not be of religious faith, but they believe in things like establishment of justice. The Moral Monday movement started in 2013 when North Carolina, because of gerrymandering and voter suppression, elected a supermajority. And for the first 50 days, they did everything they could to go backwards. They passed a bill in the Senate which changed 40 parts of our voting laws, the most, most expansive voter suppression law we had seen since Jim Crow. Seventeen of us went in to the legislature to protest. We said, this is our building. We said, we're not here Democrat or Republican. We're here to challenge the immoral direction of our state. They arrested us, and the next Monday people came, the next Monday people came. The movement was ahead of us. In 2016, we won our legal battles around voter suppression. We took those moral constructs along with our deepest religious values and invited people into a movement, regardless of race, creed, color, or party and thousands upon thousands joined. And it became the foundation of a movement that's now being used in the Poor People's Campaign and has spread around many other parts of the country. My drive comes from a number of places. My father, early on, taught me that the only purpose of life is to make a difference in the lives of others and to stand up for what is right and just and full of love and full of compassion. I also get a lot of inspiration from being among the people. I pastor and I see what people go through. When folk are denied health care, I have to bury the people that die from that. When I visit homeless camps and see people who fought for our country being forced to live as homeless, it moves you in a deep place. This is a re-engagement gift. This is a re-engagement acknowledgement. Um, people will, will even more believe you have something to say and more importantly, a vision.